Well, what makes it special to me, I don't know about you, Brian, to me is uh, when I first saw the blocks, it just blew me away that the, the ease with which you could just uh, assemble them and that you couldn't make any syntax errors. You could make stuff that didn't make sense and things that was wrong, but you couldn't make syntax errors and everything worked right away. I think that, that was the one thing that really got me. Huh. It's interesting. For me, it was very different. Um, I, when I first saw the language, um, I thought, can't define procedures. What kind of language is this? And um, what really brought me around was the Scratch community. Because uh, in the first Scratch conference in 2008, uh, they had the brilliant idea of having three kids as the initial keynote speech. Um, and talking about, uh, you know, not the technical details of Scratch, but what it's like on the Scratch website and, and being part of the community. And um, I really saw that as an amazing development. Uh, and they put a ton of effort into making that work. Um, the blocks are nice, too. I mean, the blocks are probably yeah. the reason why the kids are there, right? Or one yeah, of the reasons. Yeah, one of the right? reasons. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> okay. So, um, first of all, it's not so many, actually. Right. It's first-class lists and first-class procedures. Um, and yeah, and continuations, but that was that was really just a joke to try to make Mitch's head explode. Um, <laughs> but um, we wanted to teach a computer science course for non-computer science majors, um, and so did a lot of other universities. And several different places had the idea of using Scratch because. You know, if it's unintimidating enough for an eight-year-old, uh, it's unintimidating enough for a non-computer scientist at, at college level. Um, but all of us ran into this wall that uh, you really can't get very far in computer science because of deliberate omissions from the language. Um, not very many of them, as it turned out, but, but some. And all those other schools solved the problem by doing Scratch for one week or two weeks and then switching to some grown-up language. Um, and we didn't want to do that. Um, we wanted to find a way to have a, a consistent course that was in Scratch all the way. Um, and to do computer science, there's really two things you need. Uh, one is the ability to create uh, general data structures. And um, in Scratch terms, that really means things like lists of lists. Um, and the other is the ability to create control structures, and that means uh, recursion and anonymous procedures. Um, so we really added very little. It's just that the little that we added um, makes it possible for our users to do so much. And having said that, I'm not saying it wasn't a lot of work to do it because for each of those big ideas, uh, there's a ton of user interface design to make it work smoothly. But uh, we didn't really add very much, and the reason was to support computer science classes. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you mentioned recursion, which was really the other big idea besides first class functions and first class lists. and, and you know, the other answer to this would be how did it come to pass that we added it? And, and that was at the first Scratch conference uh, where I think on the last day, uh, Brian made a, uh, an impromptu session, like a self-organized session, where he showed a great example by Paul Goldenberg, I think it was called V, and, and he used some of the very advanced new features in Scratch 1.3, I think it was, back then, which was lists. And the other ability, if I remember right, was that you could broadcast, uh, that you could put a variable into the, 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 the broadcast um, drop-down menu slot. And you could sort of make some form of tail recursive call that way, 
but you couldn't make, and that, that was your example, you couldn't make a, a branching recursion. Uh, so you had this list with words, and, and, and they got broadcast, and, and I, I remember that the sprite moved, but it didn't ever get back. Right. And, and that's really uh, how, how, how it was clear that there wasn't a way to, to do recursion right in Scratch back then, and, and, and it was and it was actually John Maloney who, who implemented really first Scratch versions uh, mainly, who, who was in the audience and said, you know, we could do this um, using a, a dialog box, and you know, these, these blocks could be executed at the speed of just a regular block instead of being interleaved with others. So it was kind of a, uh, you know, Brian's you sparked this off, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and and John sparked off another part, and then sort of it evolved from then. <laughs> oh, because BYOB got to be really slow and buggy. That's one reason. <laughs> <laughs> Unmaintainable. But also, um, it's kind of an ironic story. When we started um, going around teaching teachers with BYOB, um, they said, uh, I'm not allowed to install software on our school computers. Um, so it, it has to run in a browser, was the conclusion to that. Um, and the, the funny part is now they're saying, well, our school has a, a very narrow whitelist of websites, so I can't. Um, use it in the browser either, so we haven't really solved the problem. But that was one of the big motivations. I think. Another motivation was way more like pedestrian uh, because uh, the Scratch team abandoned the Squeak oh, yeah. version and started working on a new version, the Flash-based version of Scratch 2.0. And I think at the time it even was called it wasn't called uh, Scratch 2.0. I think John was doing the. Scratch for CS, that was the first thing. And so it was clear there wouldn't be another version based on the uh, Scratch source code. And uh, they weren't sharing the Flash <laughs> code yet, so we had to sort of, you know, decide whether it was okay to move on with the Smalltalk Squeak version, which we did for another year to add some things like, like first class uh, sprites and inheritance and prototypical object orientation, but it was also a practical consideration. We had to rewrite it in some language, and so uh, I think we chose JavaScript after Brian Silverman hinted to us that it's not such a bad language yeah. as I believed it was. And yeah. Yeah, so. It's going to take over the world. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm really bad at predicting the future. Um, it, well, the question I think should be, uh, what's the future of computer programming for kids? Um, and that has ups and downs. And right now, we're in an up. Uh, this morning, Mitch mentioned code.org, which um, has led to just a huge amount of interest in kids doing computer programming. And uh, that's got to be good for Scratch. Um, but, um, you know, 10 years from now, people will go back to saying kids should just learn how to use Microsoft Word. Uh, that wouldn't be so good for Scratch. So who knows? I mean, there'll be ups and downs, but it'll, it'll live forever. Yeah, it's hard to say. I think it's it's very successful, and even in like in some countries, it's my impression that in the UK, the reboot and restart um, uh, initiative really is missing the word in Scratch uh, because it appears that Scratch is just so strong, and and I I'm, I'm more optimistic about about Scratch. I I think it hits many of the right spots to, to be successful. Did I sound pessimistic? 
Maybe. I mean, I just think it's going to be ups and downs. <laughs> oh, okay, good. But, um, you know. Yeah. And I, I certainly, you know, I hope that Thai-based programming, uh, blocks-based programming, I hope that there is a future for that. And I think we haven't even begun to really discover the possibility. Conference, I think it's fantastic that, um, uh, like, you uh, single handedly kicked this off in, in such a short time without an affiliation to either a big company or a famous university. Uh, and I think it's, it's, it's been a, um, a lucky strike that. Um, he got in touch with the city lab and with uh, what uh, you are doing here, and, and to to hook up the great resource of of Yuke's enthusiasm for Scratch and about bringing the joy to Europe and and this wonderful location, which is suited perfectly. I'm I'm totally blown away. Yeah, I'm, I'm very. I always like these conferences because, um, again, not so much for the sessions as for the community, you know. Um, as in most conferences, the important part is what happens at the coffee breaks, you know, and people talk to each other, and it's, it's always a very warm feeling.